I am Ernest. And I am Norfolk. And we are team now, competing in the Cold Space Rescue Challenge for Robocup Singapore. Cold Space Rescue Challenge is a competition where robots compete to get the highest score on the map with obstacles, traps, and colored objects. Our main tasks are to navigate the map's obstacles, collect as many colored points as possible, deposit collector blocks, and avoid traps. For our preliminary round, we were given the map shown on the slides, and although it was relatively simple, a few problems still arose, such as the reward getting trapped in the top left of the map, and that the red gems were situated far left, away from the collection points. Due to the obstacles in the top left being ground and being situated right next to both borders, it is, it is possible for a robot to get stuck in between the borders and the obstacle, resulting in a complete loss of a run. To solve this problem, we just had to code in an action that overrides all other actions to move either to the right or towards the bottom so that it escapes that area. The problem of having the red gems situated far away from the collection points meant that the final path our robot would take would be rather long, as it would have to traverse the entire length of the map in order to collect and deposit the gems needed to make the set. Therefore, it will be of utmost importance to travel quickly, and this is where our strategy comes into play. We realized that we did not have to travel around every single area of the map in order to, co to collect the gems needed to complete three full sets, and therefore, we could effectively ignore the rest of the map as it would lead to more risk or little reward. Therefore, forcing our bot to stick to regions 1, 2, and 3, and following the path as shown in the slides, will allow us to obtain as many points as necessary and spend less time on coding for the other areas. Trigonometry also played a big part in our program this time round, as we made use of the attack proof function in order to obtain super objects and reach the collection points in region 3. Simply inputting the difference between the y and x values of the destination and the starting location will return an angle value which we could convert into degrees and turn towards so that moving forwards will allow us to reach the goal. We also noted that the intent to function may not always be perfectly accurate, so we made up for that by giving the robot random motion when it got close to the super object to ensure that it will collect the super object. Navigation of the map was made relatively simple using the region strategy we mentioned earlier and it helped by ensuring the robot was always in or travelling to an area that had the best chances of fulfilling its goals and succeeding. This is the flowchart for the behaviour of a robot in regards to the map navigation. The implementation of the code was mostly made with a different format from the provided one, as we realised that the provided format made it difficult to read, as the conditions and actions were separated by hundreds of lines of code. Therefore, by developing a new format that allows us to place conditions and actions together, we can greatly reduce the time spent looking up and down the code and the amount of human error. These are the previews of our format as well as the provided one. Debugging was quite simple for us as we had prior experience in the Tianjin Invitational, and so we were able to see many of the bugs ahead of time and fix them before they could cause any major problems. For the bugs that did end up occurring during the preliminary round, our debugging process was simple. We just had to find the possible causes, look through the code thoroughly, and if it could not be solved so easily, we just ran unit tests on the selected portion of code. In conclusion, even though that we felt that our results were rather alright at about 1,880 points, we had to improve the robot's reliability massively, as it might end up being a major problem in the future, as evidenced by the poor consistency of the robot's performance this preliminary run. We have considered using an alternative strategy, making use of Python scripts with image processing modules to pass the map so that we could make use of pathfinding algorithms, but we shall save that for the future, as there is not much time left. Using the post space robot, we learned more about the logic programming and understanding how to use conditions more effectively to make our bot do specific things for specific situations. Through this challenge, we also learned what it really means to persevere, as during the preliminary round, although we were done with the program, we, made, we, went with, we went the extra mile to run the program for a long time just to get the best results. Something important we would like to share with the Ghost Space game members is that the ultimate goal for this experience is to have fun and learn something, so don't be disheartened if you do not win. Enjoy the satisfaction you feel when you finish that one line of empty code or that feeling of joy when your robot does what you wanted to do. All the feelings of satisfaction are what you truly win. Thank you for your kind attention and see you at the finals.